Hi everyone, my name is Rizwan Tarek and in this video I am going to be talking about some of the concepts related to hardware and software core design. If you have any version of Zinc FPGA board then the understanding of hardware and software core design is really important because uh, th this hardware and software core design is one of the really strong feature of uh, Zinc FPGA boards. And in this video, we'll try to understand um, what is really the difference between hardware development and software development and how can we do it on Zinc FPGAs. What are the different terms that we have to take care of uh, while working with uh, Zinc FPGA boards. So as I also showed you guys in the previous video, I have an Ultra 96 version 2 board and when you open the user guide of this board and it shows you something like this and this is the block diagram of the board and we can see that it has this processing system PS and it has this programmable logic which is called PL and what it is doing here this PS is basically a zinc processing system which consists of multiple ARM cores and this programmable logic is basically our FPGA logic um, where we implement our hardware and you can see that there are a lot of interfaces for example sync processing system is connected to micro SD card UART ports user LEDs and I2C ports and also connected to um, display port Wi-Fi and Bluetooth port USB 3 ports and you can see that the low speed expansion connectors and high speed expansion connectors they are connected to both of them to the processing system and to the programmable logic as well and so let's let's try and dig more into it what does it mean by processing system and what does it mean by programmable logic so in the zinc fpgas when we are talking about software development we are talking about implementation on the processing system and when we talk about implementation of hardware or hardware development, we are talking about programmable logic. Now let's have a look at it from a different perspective. And, and as I said, we are trying to understand hardware and software core design. So you can think of software implementation as the implementation on Zinc processing system, which is this part. And you can think of hardware development as the implementation on programmable logic, which is this part. So when we talk about software development on Zinc processing system, we are doing normally development in the language which is C or C++. And these, this, this Zinc processing system consists of multiple ARM cores. And these multiple ARM cores you can program quite easily and very flexibly like easy to sort of program the cores again and again and the whole workflow is really fast you can do faster development because whenever you make some changes in the code the code compiles really quickly and very quickly you can program the zinc processing system and all the four cores uh, which are there uh, in the zinc fpga but as we know that uh, whenever we try and execute the software code, the software code is sequential in nature and because of the sequential execution, the processing is generally slow. So we are generally not able to get a huge performance benefits because of the sequential execution. And that's when hardware comes into play because the benefit of hardware is that it accelerates our functions. It basically increases the performance of our uh, whole system. So when we say we are doing hardware development on Zinc FPGAs, we generally mean that we are either writing uh, VSGL, Verilog or system Verilog code and making our hardware. So the problem with the hardware is that its development process is slow. For example, if you are creating a design on VSGL or Verilog, you will synthesize the design and you will put the constraints file, you will do the implementation and then you will generate the bit stream. And in some cases, this whole process can take up to four hours, five hours. And the bigger your design is, the more, uh, the more time it's going to be taking. And, and because of that as well, it is becoming less flexible to change the design 
because let's say you changed some design and now you have to resynthesize everything and generate the beta stream so there is less flexibility in hardware development but hardware gives us huge benefit in computation it because of its parallel processing we can really get the performance benefits out of hardware so this is a really plus a good plus point uh, for hardware development so you can see that there are some pros and cons of uh, uh, software and hardware software is flexible the development process is faster uh, but the, it has issues with the performance and hardware development is generally slow and um, but it has huge benefits in terms of performance so this is when hardware software core design comes into play so let's let's take a, a small example so let's say you you write a program in c language uh, you write a software which is running on zinc processing system and you print the hello world and it will it will work just fine now let's make it a little bit more complicated now let's say after the hello world you decided to print the results of a fast Fourier transform but the fast Fourier transform results you will have to fetch from the hardware because the FFT the fast Fourier transform is implemented in the hardware logic so I'm, I'm just explaining it as an example you can also implement FFT in software but for the sake of this example let's assume that your FFT logic your your fast Fourier transform is implemented in hardware and you would like to get the results of this FFT and print it in your software now the question is how will you do it there is no connection between PS and PL there has to be some connection between PS and PL with which they can share the data they can talk to each other or they can sort of do some handshaking and this is where PSPL interfaces comes into play so PSPL interfaces are basically helping our software talk to our hardware or helping our hardware talk to our software so we have master and slave interfaces on both sides on hardware side as well and also on the software side with which we can sort of do this two-way data transactions so let's have a quick look what are the different PSPL interfaces there are generally more but I have just written it down some of the common ones so one way with which you can um, talk to the hardware or the PL of the Zinc FPGA is with the help of GPIOs for example imagine your FFT blog requires some control signals and those control signals you can provide with the help of GPIOs so so in, in so in one way you can trigger your FFT block with the help of these GPIOs so not just GPIOs you can also use AXI bus board to talk to the hardware and there are multiple um, master and slave ports which can help your software talk to the hardware and which can also help your hardware uh, talk to your software and this all comes under PSPL interfaces uh, in the Vivado block design and when once we go there we will have a look at it again so there are different kinds of AXI interfaces uh, AXI HP ACP and ACE we will look uh, into the details later like what are the different purposes of these uh, different AXI ports so if you just would like to use the control signals then the GPIOs are fine but if you would like to uh, transfer huge amount of data from software to the hardware or from the hardware to the software then you definitely need AXI bus ports because they are meant for this purpose and imagine for example the output of the FFT the output of FFT is not just one signal it is sometimes quite a number of values so how can you read all of those values into the software system you will have to make use of this AXI bus ports and also there are PSPL interrupts so imagine you have this FFT block every time it generates a result it also generates an interrupt and this interrupt can be feed to this PS interrupts so that whenever an interrupt comes you know that you have to go through the AXI bus 
to the FFT block and read the FFT output and then print the results here. So this is how the PSPL interfaces work. So, so far we have talked about software development, which is happening on the processing system. We talked about hardware development, which is happening on the programmable logic. And we also talked about the PSPL interfaces with which our software world is communicating to the hardware world and vice versa. So I would like to also bring in another topic, which is hardware software partitioning. And in the previous example, we have implemented FFT on the FPGA logic. But the question is, how will you decide where you should implement your FFT? Should you implement it in the FPGA logic or should you implement it in your processing system? So there are certain things which the processing system does it really nice while there are certain things which the programmable logic is doing really good. And the process of deciding which task should be done by the PS or which task should be done by the programmable logic is called hardware software partitioning. So what is really the goal when we are working on a hardware software core design? So we want to achieve a partition between hardware and software that will give us the required performance within our overall system requirements. We would like to get good performance, but at the cost of low power and low resource utilization. And cost is also a really important factor. Um, imagine if your design is unnecessarily big, you will not be able to fit it in small FPGAs. For that, you will have to spend more money to buy bigger FPGAs. So I will repeat, the goal is basically to find an optimum balance between software and hardware so that we can get maximum performance with less power, less resource utilization, and also with less cost. Now the question is how to achieve this goal. For example, you would like to implement your favorite task in a hardware software co-design manner. What workflow you should be following uh, in order to achieve this thing? How to decide whether you should implement your logic on PS or whether you should implement your logic on PL? What is the right balance between the PS and the PL or the hardware and the software? So this is a, this is a very high level workflow which I have listed it down. It can be different in different industries and different research institutes. So if you are following a different workflow to achieve hardware software core design goals, please let me know in the comments and I would definitely love to read about it. And I would really like to know how are you sort of approaching this problem of hardware software core design. But let me just uh, briefly discuss what I generally follow in my workflow. So the first thing that you should be doing is to gather requirements. What is really the requirements of your task that you are trying to do? Uh, do you have any timing requirements? Is it like that you have to, um, you have some performance or latency limitations? So you have to write down all of those requirements. For example, if you are working in automotive industry, your requirements may be different. And if you are working, let's say in an oil industry or in defense industry, the requirements will be different. So the first step is definitely uh, gather the requirements. And the second step is write down the specification. So specifications can be really detailed and it, it really depends how complex is your system. Write all the interfaces of the task or the function that you want to implement and how that block will be communicating with other blocks. And does it have any special requirements in terms of control signals or interrupts? And the data should be given in, in how many bits? Is it 32 bits? Is it 64 bits? And then the third step would be do a very high level implementation of your task or a function either in MATLAB or in system C. So the high level implementation in MATLAB or system C comes really handy because this implementation can give us some confidence and also with the help of the results on this level, we can verify the results of our lower level implementation. So I think a higher level implementation model is really necessary. 
And if you are on Zing FPGS, then the fourth step I will recommend is to profile the code in Vivado HLS. What do I mean by this? By this I mean that you implement the desired task in Vivado HLS compatible C, C++ code. And you profile the code. With the help of profiling the code in Vivado HLS, you will know what are the data dependencies in your task or your function. And Vivado HLS profiling helps us understand the data dependencies and it helps us to decide which part of the code is parallelizable. And as we also discussed briefly before that there is generally a trade-off between performance and resource utilization. To, to get the maximum performance, you will be consuming a lot of resources. So with the help of Vivado HLS, we can generate a lot of different solution with different performance and resource utilization parameters. And then we will also be checking that whether these performance and resource utilization, is it really fulfilling our requirements or not? So we will keep tuning our Vivado HLS code until we uh, met our requirements. Uh, in short, you have to identify the functions which have high latency or they are computationally heavy. Those functions have to be moved to the PL side or the hardware side for acceleration. A good candidate for hardware acceleration is matrix operations and they can be easily parallelizable. If there are a lot of data dependencies in your algorithm or function, then this might not be a good candidate for hardware implementation. We should generally execute these tasks in softwares. So this is it from this video. Uh, we discussed about what is software development, what is hardware development, what are the benefits of software development, benefits of hardware developments, the trade-offs, the PSPL interfaces, and how to really approach this hardware software core design goal. So if you have any comments or feedback, please let me know in the comments. I would love to read your feedback and, and I'll try to help you as much as I can. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video.